Today's episode is sponsored by Magellan TV. Imagine moving from a standstill to a breakneck 120 miles per hour in just 3.9 seconds. That's the promise that the Top Thrill Dragster roller coaster has delivered on since its first iconic ride in 2003. But the 420 foot tall Cedar Point ride hasn't moved since a devastating accident left a woman with severe brain injuries. So in this video, I'm analyzing the incidents that ended the Top Thrill Dragster. It's a warm Sunday in Ohio on August 15th, 2021. 44-year-old Rachel Hawes has traveled from Swartz Creek, Michigan to experience the gravity-defying ride that lasts only 17 seconds. In reality, she has no idea that merely standing in line for this ride will change her life forever. As the top thrill dragster hits the apex on its final descent, a piece of metal from one of the trains on the roller coaster breaks off during mid-ride and flies towards Hawes, hitting her in the back of the head. Her father, Robert Edmonds, witnesses the incident. He sees what looks like a black square flying in the air, hitting his daughter as the roller coaster train returns to the station. Where did the mysterious black square come from? And how did it end up flying off on the ride? When the Top Thrill Dragster launched in 2003, it was the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world. In fact, the Top Thrill Dragster gives you the complete drag racing experience with true-to-life countdown of the so-called Christmas tree light before the roller coaster springs into action. It then launches 400 feet straight into the air at a 90-degree incline and a speed of 120 miles per hour. The ride then cruises to the peak before it flies straight back down with a 270-degree corkscrew twist on the way down. While there are no official figures for how many people were queuing to ride the Top Thrill Dragster that day, Attendance records show that the ride can serve over 900 riders per hour through its turnstiles. According to another bystander, the object that struck the woman flew like a metal disc through the air. The witness, John McDermott, who was standing in line for the ride with his girlfriend and six-year-old son, says he was around 20 feet from her when he saw a piece of metal about the size of the palm of his hand hit the crowd, and then saw the victim sink to the floor, screaming in agony. Also queuing in the line on that fateful afternoon was David Vallow, a registered nurse. He said the scene was majorly chaotic, with crowds of people screaming and jumping over the gates towards the exit. Vallow heard someone yell that a woman was hurt, so he ran through the crowd towards the commotion to find her. Then he and some of the other patrons took off their shirts to try to treat her injuries as best they could. The park's emergency medical services arrived shortly after that. EMS body camera footage shows a group of people surrounding the spot where Hawes was lying on the floor. It also captured an off-duty county sheriff's deputy explaining what he witnessed during the traumatic event. We all saw it fly off. Went over the iron dragon, then went down the top of one of those things and shot downwards. Hawes was taken to a nearby hospital with what reports refer to as an unknown type of head injury. However, a statement released by her family a few days after the incident stated that she was in the ICU in critical condition with a brain injury. But what exactly was this unknown metal object that led to this horrifying experience? Following the shocking events, Ohio Department of Agriculture investigators, who inspect all the amusement rides in the state, descended on Cedar Point. They conducted post-accident inspections find comb thousands of maintenance reports, witness reports, and laboratory findings and interviewed more than 10 Cedar Point staff. It was later found that the piece of metal that struck Hawes in the back of her head was in fact an L-shaped bracket that connects to the back of the roller coaster car. Investigators explained that the bracket, roughly the size of an adult male's hand, is connected to the back of the car and is intended to hover over the track. The bracket, or proximity flag plate, effectively communicates with the roller coaster operating system, telling it that the train is passed over a specific portion of the track. Though during the ride's 420-foot descent, the bracket dislodged along with half the bolts which secured it and struck the victim in the head. According to the Chief of Amusement Rides, David Miran, the top thrill dragster was last inspected three months before the incident on May 14th and no significant issues were discovered. 
The attraction therefore passed its statewide inspection, which declared it compliant on May 15, 2021. And because of Tyler's Law, which came into effect in 2017 after the tragic death of Tyler Jarrell, who was flung from a ride at the Ohio State Fair, all roller coasters must be inspected twice a year by at least two inspectors. The Top Thrill Dragster's second inspection was due in September, with the park performing daily checks on the roller coaster. Following the accident, the $25 million ride was shut down for the rest of the 2021 season to allow for further investigations. In a report released six months after the incident, Ohio Department of Agriculture investigators found insufficient evidence to find Cedar Fair Entertainment Company, the holding company, guilty of any infringements. The lengthy 620-page report included an accident report of the ride, reviews of hundreds of maintenance records, witness accounts, and interviews with Cedar Point staff. According to the Department of Agriculture, the investigation wasn't established to determine the cause of the accident, but rather to guarantee the park followed all the laws and regulations to ensure the ride was safe for its patrons. Therefore, found no negligence, stating the ride, including the flag plate, had been inspected the evening before the accident and did not find any damage. The full report noted that the bolts, which were intact on the morning of the 15th, failed by instantaneous overload fracture. One had suddenly fractured between the head and the bolt's body at some point between the earlier maintenance checks and the incident. Additionally, interviews with the maintenance staff involved with the upkeep and operation of the track and the roller coaster listed two other instances in the months leading up to the accident where staff had to replace missing bolts on the top thrill dragster and a maintenance record from days before indicates that one worker had tightened 16 brake bolts and repaired a hitting brake on August 13th. The park's manager of ride maintenance said the proximity flag plates at the back of each roller coaster train are removed and then replaced every year during the park's off-season. With reduced usage during the COVID pandemic, the overhaul was scaled back in consultation with the ride's manufacturer, Intamin. Investigators, however, said they considered this when they found that the park had not committed any violations, stating that Cedar Point had adhered to its reduced overhaul agreement. The report concluded that Cedar Point's maintenance program for the roller coaster was per the manufacturer's recommendations. It found that based on maintenance records, staff had been actively inspecting, and making the necessary repairs and performing preventative maintenance to the roller coaster. A stop operation order has been imposed by the state, following an inspection of the ride on August 16th, one day after the incident in 2021. It listed a series of defects, such as multiple loose bolts in fixed brake fins and the brake framework. Additionally, numerous bolts were found to be of a different or improper grade, and several mechanical issues were found pertaining to the train cars. It also found suspected damage to the ride's brake assembly. The ride remained out of commission for the 2022 season, followed by more bad news from Cedar Point on September 6th. After 19 seasons in operation, with 18 million riders experiencing the world's first Stratocoaster, Top Thrill Dragster as you know it is being retired. As of the making of this video, a large crane is on site and pieces of the launch track have been removed. Even though the 2021 incident retired the coaster, it wasn't the first. Before we get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor. Do you like disaster documentaries like this one? Then Magellan TV is for you. I'm currently watching Alive. It's a well-researched documentary series telling disasters from the perspective of survivors who had the smarts and the raw human instinct to survive. The Mammoth Mountain Miracle Man episode follows professional hockey player Eric Lemarque, who got trapped in the Sierra Nevada wilderness at over 11,500 feet his seven-day survival story is nothing short of a miracle. Magellan TV is the documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers. When you sign up, you can choose from over 3,500 hours worth of full-length documentaries, and 15 to 20 new episodes are added every week. As a result, Magellan TV has the most varied history content available anywhere, covering ancient to modern history, science, space, and more. You can watch on your TV, laptop, or mobile device for as low as $4.99 per month. 
Magellan TV is offering Dark History viewers the first month of streaming for free to watch Alive and the rest of their extensive collection of history content. Click the link in the description to start your free month of documentaries today. The ride was frequently closed for maintenance associated with the complicated hydraulic launch system. And each one of those mechanical or electrical components has a, has a failure life. It's going to go bad at some point. There are so many components in this system uh, that, that we have to keep on top of them. On July 14, 2004, four people were pelted by flying debris while on the ride. Reports found that the launch cable, which resembles a thick metal rope, frayed during the launch, shearing off pieces of metal that hit the riders. Their injuries were not life-threatening, mainly abrasions and cuts, which were treated at the park. In a later incident on August 7, 2016, four riders were also hit by flying debris while on the coaster after the launch cable detached from the ride. Two were treated for minor injuries, and the top thrill was closed the following day for investigations. It's unknown what's become of Rachel Hawes or if she recovered from her injuries. The last statement released by the family was a few days after the incident in 2021, when the victim was transported to St. Vincent's Hospital in Toledo. The family said they were devastated by the accident at Cedar Point and thanked everyone for their thoughts and prayers. They said that Rachel was fighting for her life and that the family would like some privacy. This tragic accident won't prevent more than 380 million people from taking about 1.7 billion roller coaster rides in parks across the U.S. annually. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.